Hello, I am the Shadow Mathematician. Welcome to 4.4 Imaginary Numbers. We're going to use our imagination. Let's get in. Okay, so we're getting into what's called imaginary numbers. Uh, so up until now, we've been dealing with like square roots, how to solve square roots. But um, uh, up until now, if we had something like this, x squared plus 1 equals 0, if we were to, let's say, solve it, we would have x squared equals negative 1, and we would just say no solution. The real answer is no real solution. So generally, we square root both sides. Uh, we can't have a negative sign under the square root. So if you're like a bridge engineer or um, like, a, you know, uh, uh, whatever, if you get a negative under a square root, that means that you did something wrong. So your bridge fell. Um, but as mathematicians, we have other ways of dealing with this negative sign that is underneath the square root. Uh, and we call that, or we call them, imaginary numbers. So mathematicians got together, and we came up with, they, I wasn't a part of this, this idea of imaginary numbers to help deal with negative signs under a square root. So that's all it is. So we came up with the imaginary unit, I, I know, we're really creative, uh, and it's simply defined as i equals the square root of negative 1. That's all it is. So this is useful when working with square roots and negative numbers. So then we've got one more definition. A pure imaginary number is written in the form bi, where b is the real number, and i is the imaginary part. So long story short, B would be a number, and that's all it is. So if we were to actually do one of these things, um, what would happen is we would, we would have a negative sign under the square root. So we would rewrite it as negative 1 times that same number. Break A down if it is not a perfect square. We've been doing this, so we should be pretty good at that. And then simplify the radical, knowing that i is equal to negative 1. Long story short, all it is is this negative sign, when it comes out of the square root, it turns into an i. That's it. Uh, so let's try some examples. Okay, so example number one, we've got a negative sign in our, under our square root. Can't deal with that. We're going to have to use the imaginary number. So we can break this up into square root of negative 1 times square root of 9. We know that the negative 1 turns into i. The square root of 9 turns into 3. So we just have our actual answer is 3i. Generally, we, we put the number first. I'm not going to take off points if you put the i first, but common mathematical nomenclature is we put the 3 first. Okay, let's go through this whole top row real quick. So we can break this one up into negative 1 and 1, whoops, 196, square root, square root. And if you plug in 196, square root of, plug, square root of 196 in your calculator, you get 14, and this turns into i, which we'll just put right there and circle it. There's our answer. So number three, same thing. We can break it up into negative one, square root of negative one times square root of five. We can't do anything with square root of five. So our answer is just going to be i square root of five. No problems. Some more practice here. Number four, we've got a negative 80. I'm just going to stop writing the negative one because to me it's pretty obvious that that negative sign just turns into an i. So <coughs> I'm going to deal with this 80. Um, 80 is the same as 16 times 5. Uh, and if you didn't know that, again, just use your calculator. And you can just take 80. I'm just going to immediately divide it by 5 because I know that it is divisible by 5. 
And then that's where I get the 16 from. I know that 16 is a perfect square. So when we square root both of these, I'm just gonna put my I out, um, out in front. So we have I four square root of five. So our I went there, our 16 turned into, our square root of 16 turned into four, and our five stayed under the square root. Five, uh, same thing, we've got a negative sign. We're gonna put the I outside, the, outside of the square root, and that deals with our negative sign. Our 32, if I take 32, I'm just gonna divide it by two, see what it is. So we got another 16. Uh, so we're gonna have, say square root of 16 times square root of two. So then our final answer is I four square root of two. Again, 16 turn into four, square root of two stayed underneath the, the radical. Uh, and just to kind of get used to writing it the, the correct way, it should say four I square root of two. Again, I'm not gonna make a big deal about that, but I guess I might as well show the correct way of doing it. So negative 192, again, we've got I outside the square root. Um, so your 192, if I take 192 divided by three, uh, I get 64. Uh, 64 is eight times eight. So that's a perfect square. So we're gonna turn this into 64 times, what did I say? times three, all underneath the square root. So then 64 turns into eight, so we're gonna have eight i squared of three. So again, all this is, is when you see a negative sign underneath the square root, take that negative sign, turn it into an i outside of the square root, and continue on. Okay, now that we're getting kind of comfortable with the idea of the i, now we can actually use it to solve those quadratic equations. And basically we're gonna be doing the exact same thing we did in the last lesson, just now where we might have an I in our answer. So it's the same mechanisms, we're just adding one tiny little thing to it. So for example, if I'm looking at number seven here, uh, in order to solve this, we're gonna take x squared equals negative 81, moving that 81 to the other side. So then we're gonna square root both sides. So then I got x equals plus or minus square root of negative eight. So normally, 81. <laughs> so normally we would just stop there and say no solution, negative sign, can't do that. But now that we've got an i, we can say x equals plus or minus i nine, because nine times nine is 81. Uh, and again, just to write it nicely, uh, this is how we like to see our answers. We love to see it. So if we go over to number eight, uh, it's gonna be the same thing. Oh no, there's another number. That's fine, it's fine. So we've got two X squared equals negative eight. So I just subtracted nine to both sides. We're gonna divide both sides by two. X squared equals negative four. We're gonna square root both sides. So we're gonna have x equals plus or minus, the square root of four is two, the square root of negative one is i, so we're gonna have two i. It's as easy as that. Okay, nine and 10, here we come. So we're going to subtract 15 from both sides. Negative nine minus 15, whatever, don't make fun of me. Minus 24 equals 4x squared. 24 divided by 4. Totally can do that in my head. x squared equals negative 6. Square root both sides. We've got x equals.